Well, it's officially official. Christopher Bell has a new home next year, and it's in the Cup Series. Watch out, everyone. We've got a lot to talk about today. How's it going, everyone? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove. Sorry for the late upload. If you're watching this right after I upload, like if you're one of the people typing first down in the comments, I see you guys. There's like 12 of you all typing first. You're not all first, guys. Sorry to spoil it. But no, if you're watching this the day it comes out, sorry for the late upload. I've just, I've just been extremely busy all day long. But with the big announcement from Levine Family Racing and also NASCAR uh, revealing the start times for all the races next year, a lot of big news all of a sudden. I was just too busy to make a video during the day, but I wanted to get a video up before I went to sleep. I couldn't sleep tonight if I didn't talk about this, uh, so that's why we're here today. Sorry for the late upload if you're watching this the very next day. Good good morning. <laughs> but before I start this segment, I want to mention something really cool. GA Global Partners is putting on a timed online auction on October 1st, 10 a.m. Pacific time, and among the things they are auctioning off are actual full-size race-used, race-winning Xfinity Series race cars. You can buy Kyle Larson's race-winning car from 2018. You can buy the actual chassis from a race-winning Xfinity car. They're also selling selling a 40 car Brendan Poole, another Chip Ganassi Xfinity car, so a couple really awesome Xfinity cars actually for sale. Amongst some other things, they got some other awesome cars, some Harley-Davidson motorcycles, a bunch of cool stuff, but GA Global Partners, a timed online auction October 1st, 10 a.m. Pacific time, that's 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central, uh, yeah, they are literally selling race-winning Xfinity race cars. So this is really cool. So thanks to them uh, for partnering with Out of the Groove to get that message out to the Groovy gang. I'll put the link to the whole thing down in the description, so click on that, check it out, if nothing else, just to see these really cool pictures of Kyle Larson's race-winning car from 2018, Daytona race-winning car, still got all the confetti on it. That's pretty neat. Uh, definitely, if there's any big-time collectors out there, that's... Uh, that's something for you to for you to definitely check out. So yeah, awesome of them. Thank you for partnering with the show. So Christopher Bell. Let's talk about Christopher Bell first, and then we'll talk about the schedule stuff, because you guys kind of care about that, but I'll save that for the end. Let's talk about Christopher Bell, Levine Family Racing. Silly season continues to fall into place. So earlier today, Levine Family Racing announced that Christopher Bell will be driving the number 95 car next season in 2020 with sponsorship from Ream and Procore. This is a one-year deal that Christopher Bell is on, and a reminder, he signed this deal with Joe Gibbs. So this is a case of Joe Gibbs basically leasing Christopher Bell, the driver, over to Levine Family Racing. Now, there are some changes on the Levine Family Racing front as well. Mike Wheeler, who is the crew chief this year for Matt Benedetto, will now be moving over to a competition director role, still at Levine Family Racing. He's getting a promotion, basically. And the new crew chief of the 95 next year for Christopher Bell will be Jason Ratcliffe, who has Cup Series experience. He spent 2013 to 2017 with Matt Kenseth, won 14 races during that span. He's won Xfinity Championships with Kyle Busch. He has tons of experience, and he's been with Christopher Bell the last year and a half in the Xfinity Series, winning a ton of races, so Ratcliffe and Bell have a lot of, you know, good history together. They will be teaming up in the Cup Series next year on the 95 car. Mike Wheeler will be a competition director, basically a step up, basically overseeing all the production. Uh, he'll be at the shop each week. He won't be at the track all the time. And now reports are also saying that Levine Family Racing is going to have a closer alliance with Joe Gibbs Racing next season, closer than they've had this year, at least. And I think that's really interesting. You know, this year, 2019, is the first year that Levine switched over to Toyota. Uh, we knew that they had some Joe Gibbs Racing Alliance, they were affiliated with them in some way, shape, and form, but we didn't know what the extent of it was. From the sounds of it, was not that deep of an alliance, especially not not on the same level that the Furniture Row Joe Gibbs Alliance was on for several years there. Because, you know, for several years there, Truex winning championships and stuff, Furniture Row Racing was basically as good as Joe Gibbs Racing for a couple of years there, and you knew coming into this year that that was not going to be the case with Levine. Levine was definitely going to be a step lower, and that's what we've seen this year. Joe Gibbs Racing's been dominant, but Matt DeBenedetto's had some incredible runs, but he has not been quite at their level, and it's it's not all DeBendetto. I think DeBendetto is a competent enough driver. It's the equipment holding him back just a little bit. But that car has been more competitive this year than it ever has been. So there's that. But it sounds like next year, Levine Family Racing is taking another step forward and will be more closely aligned with Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, this is interesting. I want to refer to a tweet from Bob Pockris here that might shed some light on this because I think this is the part that makes it the most interesting. He says here that TRD's David Wilson said that the alliance with JGR and Levine Family Racing will include enhanced hardware and communication and tools and more time available on the simulator. Says it's a huge priority for Bell to have what he needs to succeed and be confident. 
And then a user on Twitter asked him whether or not the Levine Family Racing bill will increase as a result. And Bob Hockris replied, the bill increases, but the sponsorship does too with Ream coming over to the team. And so this is what is really interesting to me. So if you remember, Furniture Row Racing was riding high a couple years ago. 2017 won the championship, but then at the end of 2018, Furniture Row Racing shut down. They had to close their doors um, for a couple of reasons. One, they lost a major sponsor with Fiverr Energy, but two, their contract with JGR was up and the new contract negotiations, the way things were going, Joe Gibbs Racing was planning on jacking up the price, was planning on increasing the price that Furniture Row was gonna have to pay them to get their resources. And the two combined forced Furniture Row Racing to just shut down even though they were still at the top of their game. So now with Levine Family Racing, it sounds like Joe Gibbs is once again upping the price. Obviously they're upping the involvement. This means now Levine Family Racing is basically just gonna be paying for more Joe Gibbs equipment. So it's not like they're jacking up the price on what they're already getting. No, they're just giving them more. So obviously the bill is gonna be more. So it's not, it's not shady, it's not bad in that sense. But it does mean that Levine Family Racing is putting more of their money forward now. Levine Family Racing is starting to commit, it sounds like, to actually being more competitive. Now, a good point there is that part of the reason they're probably okay with paying extra money is because they're going to be getting extra money with Ream coming over as a sponsor. That's a Joe Gibbs sponsor that is now going to be paying Levine Family Racing. So it's kind of just a circle. Joe Gibbs sponsor is paying Levine Family Racing, who's then going to pay Joe Gibbs again, who's going to give them equipment. But it's it's basically a, a big circle at this point. But it is interesting that Levine Family Racing is now officially invested. You know, Furniture Row Racing was invested and eventually it got too big for them and they fell through. Levine Family Racing this year was very small, but now in 2020, they are officially invested. So we'll see if their fate ends up being a little better than Furniture Row's ended up being, uh, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. So that's all the behind the scenes stuff. Let's talk about what this means for Christopher Bell and that race team next year, because they're gonna be contenders. That's the truth. I know it's early to make my 2020 playoff predictions, but Christopher Bell is gonna make the playoffs next year, in my opinion. I can't say he's gonna win a race. I think there's a good chance he wins a race, but I think he's gonna make the playoffs next year. I think he is gonna be competitive. I think he's going to contend for wins. You think back, a lot of these young guys in NASCAR, I mean, a lot of times their first couple years are kind of sluggish. Eric Jones didn't make the playoffs his first year. Kyle Larson took him a few years to win. Chase Elliott, Chase Elliott was probably one of the most competitive young drivers his rookie season. He made it to, what is it, the round of 12, had some good good races, almost won some races in there. Uh, but even he didn't win until his third year in the Cup Series. So a lot of young drivers have gotten off to kind of slow starts in recent years. Christopher Bell has a very good chance to break that streak. I think we could see a rookie winner next year and it wouldn't surprise me too much. I definitely think he's gonna make the playoffs. Winning, it's too early to say, but I think he will have a chance. I think he will lead laps at from time to time and will have opportunities to win if things fall the right way. Uh, so I'm very excited for Christopher Bell. Joe Gibbs racing, you know, with the four car rule, they can't have more than four cars, but now Christopher Bell is still basically under their control in the fifth car and he's gonna be really good for many years. So Joe Gibbs is in a perfect, he's played this perfectly. He's played this system absolutely perfectly because he managed to help hold on not just to Christopher Bell, but also Eric Jones, who say what you guys will about Eric Jones, but he is still a good driver, a guy who will win many more races and will contend for championships one day. Not next year, probably not this year it looks like, but at some point he will contend for championships. And Joe Gibbs has managed to hold on to both of them. Remember, both Jones and Bell are on one-year deals, 2020. 2020 one-year contracts. This gives Joe Gibbs so much flexibility because at the end of next year, we're gonna be in the exact same spot we're in this year. He could put Christopher Bell in the 20 and Joe Eric Jones in the 95 if you want to. He could get rid of Jones completely. He could get rid of Bell completely, which would be shocking. Turex might retire out of nowhere. Hamlin could retire out of nowhere. And all of a sudden he's got, you know, he put Bell in the 11. You know, there's a lot of flexibility over at Joe Gibbs Racing right now. And really, Joe Gibbs just, he's playing with every card in the day. He's got all the best cards on the table right now, and he can just plug in the middle wherever he wants. That's a terrible analogy. I don't understand cards. Yeah, I've never played cards. I don't know. I can't, I couldn't make a good analogy there. My point is, Joe Gibbs has a lot of options, and they're all extremely good options. There's no other team in NASCAR today that can say that they have five true contending drivers in their control right now. No other team. Stuart Haas is probably the closest. Maybe Penske. Penske's got three, I'd say, with Logano, uh, Blaney, and, and Keselowski. Stuart Haas has Harvick, Boyer, and Almirola. But, like, Boyer and Almirola are, might not even make it out of the first round. So, uh, that's what I'm saying. Joe Gibbs is just this much further ahead from the rest of the field. And it's not just the cars. People like to say they're cheating. It's the Toyotas. It's the drivers, too. They got Kyle Busch. They got Martin Truex Jr. They got Denny freaking Hamlin. And now they have the two best drivers we've seen in the Xfinity Series the last several years. I mean, minus Tyler Reddick, who's tearing it up this year. Tyler Reddick's been really darn good. But Eric Jones tore it up for a couple of years there. Christopher Bell's tore it up the last couple of years. And they're both Joe Gibbs Racing drivers. So, anyway, long rant there. But, yeah, Christopher Bell's going to be a contender next year. That's for sure. 
anyway, that's really all I wanted to say about that. That's just my initial reaction. Remember, I made my predictions video a few weeks back, and uh, I predicted belt on the 95, so there's another check there. I've gotten most of these right so far. I've gotten, I'm doing pretty good. The only big one I've gotten wrong so far is to Benedetto. I thought he'd go down to the Xfinity Series with JGR, but no, he's going to the Wood Brothers, which is still really awesome. I forgot about that for a minute. That's awesome. Benedetto's going to have a good ride next year. I'm I'm happy again. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> it's been a long week, y'all. But anyway, before I wrap this video up, let's talk about uh, some other NASCAR news. They revealed the start times for the 2020 season. Remember that, like, that Pocono doubleheader? We got some details on that, finally. Just scrolling through it a little bit here, the Daytona 500 is going to be on Fox, 2.30 p.m., February 16th. Going to be pretty freaking exciting. Homestead, there early in the year. As you see on most all of these, two, three o'clock start times are once again the norm. Not bringing back those 1 p.m. starts, so still going to be the later start, because I think they think that helps with TV ratings, especially on the West Coast, which is probably true. Overall, 16 races will be on network television next year. That means 16 of the 36 races will be on either Fox or NBC, uh, which I think that is good news. That's still a solid number of races that are going to be on those channels. And as you can see there, five of the last six races of the entire season are going to be on NBC, so that's really awesome. Man, why do they got to do Texas dirty? Why do they got to put Texas on NBCSN? Why well, you gotta do me like that? <laughs> anyway, so those are the notable schedule changes. As you saw there, the latest start time is actually gonna be that brand new Martinsville night race that's run in May, an 8 p.m. Eastern start for that one. Kind of late, especially given that those Martinsville races often go over four hours. That's gonna be, it's gonna be a late night. There's also that stretch at the end of August and then into September of four straight night races to you know Daytona to end the regular season and then three straight night races to start the playoffs, Darlington, Bristol, and then what, Richmond? That's going to be a fun stretch of races. Those four races are going to be really fun. Anyway, not a whole lot else to react to there. Yeah, the later start time is still going to be a thing because it helps with TV ratings. helps get the West Coast a little bit more involved since they don't have to wake up at the crack of dawn to watch the race. They can wake up a little later. So I understand them, but I'm now on the East Coast. I just realized so this is going to be even worse for me if I stay out here. Yeah, some late start times for East Coast people, but yeah, there you have it. Not a whole lot to react to there. Last thing also on that is the, the Pocono doubleheader. Let me talk about that for a moment. June 27th and June 28th, Pocono will be at 3 the first day and then 3.30 the second day. Now these are going to be doubled up with the trucks and Xfinity. So on that Saturday race, uh, the trucks will race before the cup race. They'll race, I believe, at like noon. And so following that will be the cup race. And then on Sunday, the Xfinity series will have their race before the cup series races. Uh, so that's how that is going to work. So finally, a little bit more details on how the Pocono doubleheader is going to work. Uh, so there you have it. Anyway, that's all I really have to talk about in this episode. Again, sorry for the late upload. And if you're watching this on Wednesday or whenever you're watching this, you know, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll be back later this week with some more episodes. I got some other stuff planned. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Michael Harrison, at you of the stars. Cameron James, John Colbert, Jason Arlon, Wesley Donaldson, Isaac Danson, Mika Suzuki, iFancyRace.com, TheRacingInsiders.com, Matthew Koulopoulos, Pepe Lucius, Jeremy Conkley, Emilio Garcia, Joey DiMaccino, Sky Racing Forum, Bryce Schumacher, Scott McNew, Colton Austin, and Bradley Pelletier, and the rest of these incredible Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this without the support I get from you guys every single week, every single month. Thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to support me and support the show. Really, really means a lot. Like I said, more episodes later this week. Coming up pretty soon. Any big news I'll be talking about. We also got to do some Roval preview stuff. I'll get that out of the way here in the next day or two. So keep an eye out for all those videos. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. And I can't wait to see you guys again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everyone.